what up doing another late night reading second corinthians chapter four therefore seeing we have this ministry as we have received mercy we faint not but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty not walking in craftiness nor handling the word of god deceitfully but by manifestation of the truth condemning ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of god but if our gospel be hid it is hid to them that are lost in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not. We rebuke all that in the mighty name of Jesus. Lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is in the image of God, should shine unto them. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. That's me. For God, who commanded the light to shine out of the darkness. I'm a servant. Hath shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure. That's right. In earthen vessels that we ex that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. It ain't me, man. I ain't no good. We are troubled on every side. Yet not distressed, we are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. For we which live are always delivered unto death for Jesus' sake, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our mortal flesh. So then death worketh in us, but life in you. We having the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believed, and therefore have I spoken. We also believe and therefore speak, knowing that he which raised up the Lord Jesus shall raise up us also by Jesus and shall present us with you. For all things are for your sakes that the abundant grace might through the thanksgiving of many rebound to the glory of God, for which cause we faint not, but through, but though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us as a, work for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory, while we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporal or temporal, but the teaching, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Hmm. So I would like to be completely consumed by Jesus. That's my that's that's my highest goal is to just be zero. Zero Roy and 100% Jesus, you know, that dwells within me. I ain't him. That's for sure. I am not him. I love him. I don't put nothing above him. There are people out there that don't have your best interests at heart. That don't want you to see the truth. That want you to burn with them because they serve the God of this world. I do not do that. I already done that. And it was horrible. I wouldn't recommend it. It is the worst. Because you're a slave. You're a slave to sin. You can't stop doing it. And if you try. You might die. You know. But that's only if you have not jesus if you have jesus then you won't die you know and so no matter what even even if it if it costs me my own life i will not stop preaching this okay because he's my master i've witnessed him personally okay he didn't show me his face but i've heard his voice and it's amazing uh I'll tell you about it because this is a short story. So my uh, wife, she was working at Lindsay's. It's a little um, 
well it's not a little that's actually a big uh hair uh hairstylist place it's like booth rent where you you have your own room and you know you you pay weekly or whatever but anyway i used to hang out in the parking lot reading uh i, I read uh this guru called yogananda or something like that and he kept on referencing jesus you know i got this book in california at some woo woo place whatever you know some new age place they had a picture of jesus and shiva and that that guy the yogananda or whatever and anyway it kept on referencing jesus so i was like well let me just go ahead and read this bible since they go ahead and you know but so I was reading the Bible out there and there's actually a church connected to this um, parking lot. So I was reading near the church and whenever she was ready to go, she would call me and I would drive up and pick her up. But anyway, so I I did this for days. I, I did this like every day. Whenever she would go to work, I would just hang out in the car and I would read. OK, so I was seeking him. And what what happened was, is I was just, you know, reading uh you know, I didn't have any music on or anything. It was real quiet, you know, um, and uh, I would have the windows down. And, uh, you know, it, I think it was like during maybe summertime. It was it was pretty warm. So I, I had the I was chilling in the shade, I had the windows down and this voice. It tells me out of nowhere, no one was around. Absolutely nobody. It said they're going to redo this parking lot. They're going to repave it. I was like, who's that? Who, who's talking to me? What was, what was that? It, it's, it frightened me. And that was the first time that I remember hearing them that I can actually remember because I, you know, I may have heard them before, but, uh, you know, I, I sometimes I have, I have uh, trouble remembering things with, uh, when it comes to this sort of stuff, because some of this stuff, it, it's being revealed to me over time because um, I wasn't ready for it. But the, of what I can remember, this is the first time that I heard his voice. Well, I heard it another time, but I'll talk about that later. But this is in the recent recent time, you know, probably 10, 10 years ago, maybe. Or maybe 12 or I don't know. I didn't write it down. Sorry. But. He told me that they were going to repave the parking lot. And guess what happened the next day? They started repaving the parking lot. You know, so that's not very, it's not very remarkable, but it is remarkable because he talked to me. And, you know, I was still, I was still, you know, like looking at, you know, non, non-biblical things. But I digress. It is so imperative that you get in this book and believe it. Because it is alive, and Jesus is alive, and he wants us to win souls and tell the truth. Because when we don't walk in truth, we aren't walking with him. And so, I don't like lying. So, you know, like, you don't have to believe the, the stuff that I'm telling you. Believe this, okay? Because this is the truth, and it will not mislead you. Alright? Y'all have a great night. God bless you and your family.